Hi, my name is Molly Asby and I am in the final year of Missouri State University's Nurse Practitioner Program. For my DNP project, I am implementing a smoking cessation program at MSU Care. This information is specifically for providers and is adapted from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services based on the Quick Reference Guide for Clinicians titled Treating Tobacco Use and Dependence. I am sincerely thankful for you and your time. As a provider, you are key to this project and to the success of patient smoking cessation. The overarching aim for this project is to decrease the rates of smoking among patients at MSU Care. More than 70% of all current smokers have a desire to quit. They just need help in doing so. In order to facilitate smoking cessation among patients through this project, there are several goals that must be completed. The first is to increase provider knowledge on the current cessation guidelines. These are the guidelines that this educational presentation will cover. You will also receive a reference guide pamphlet at the provider meeting. In addition to provider education, consistent screening for patient smoking status is necessary. Provider patient discussion about smoking status and readiness to quit should also occur regularly. Patients must also increase their knowledge on the effects of smoking, ways to quit, and the appropriate cessation resources. This project aims to facilitate these tasks in order to decrease rates of smoking among MSU care patients. This graphic provides an overview of the project. The initial part of the project involves provider education, which is what you are currently participating in now, as well as a brief review at the upcoming meeting. This includes the pre and post tests to assess for increase in provider knowledge over the smoking cessation guidelines. The staff at MSU Care will also receive education, although data will not be collected to assess their learning. After all education is complete, the portion of the project that involves the patients will begin. Patients who identify themselves as smokers upon check-in will be asked to complete a survey to collect information on demographic characteristics and smoking habits. They will also complete their pretest while in the waiting room. Then, after being roomed and prior to being seen by the provider, the patient will watch a brief educational video and complete a post-test. The provider will then be able to continue with the regularly scheduled appointment. A dot phrase will be made available to you so that you can include discussion of smoking cessation in your charting if applicable. Patients will be provided with an educational handout on smoking cessation and available resources. Upon checkout, patients will be scheduled for a three-month follow-up visit at which they will complete a follow-up smoking habit survey. At this point, the data collection portion of the project will be completed and I will begin data analysis. Your input is welcome throughout this project. Please contact me with concerns about workflow and suggestions for sustainability. I am sure that we can agree that cigarette smoking is not something that we want patients to do, but it is important to also understand the overall impact of smoking so that we can better help our patients. Smoking is the leading cause of preventable death and disease in the United States causing approximately 480,000 smoking-related deaths annually. The U.S. also has a financial impact of $300 billion each year related to complications of smoking. It is estimated that 40 million adults in the U.S. currently smoke cigarettes. It is also estimated that 70% of smokers have a desire to quit. This is important to keep in mind when discussing smoking cessation with patients. Another important factor related to the patient population at MSU Care is that the rates of smoking are so much higher for higher among the poor. 15% of adults living at or above the poverty line are smokers, compared to more than 26% of adults living below the poverty line. The health risks related to smoking are numerous. Risks include coronary artery disease, stroke, peripheral vascular disease, COPD, and other lung diseases, lung cancer, other cancers, fertility and fetal complications, infections, rheumatoid arthritis, and dental, vision, and hearing problems. Patients should also be concerned about the effects that smoking has on their skin and outward appearance. It is important to inform patients about the potential development and severity of these health issues. Many patients may know that smoking is unhealthy, but not realize how debilitating and fatal smoking can be. 
even those who smoke less than five cigarettes a day can show earlier signs of heart disease. The good news is that quitting smoking at any age can reduce these risks and can result in immediate and long-term health benefits. There are 10 key findings or highlights from the current guidelines. Number one states that tobacco dependence is a chronic disease and should be treated as one. Number two stresses the importance of identifying tobacco users and treating them during appointments. Three states that clinicians should encourage all smokers willing to quit to utilize counseling and medication, if available and appropriate. Four states that brief interventions are effective and clinicians should use them at every opportunity. Number five identifies counseling as an effective tool for cessation. This includes individual, group, and telephone counseling. Six states that effective medications do exist, they can be used alone or in combination, and that they should be used in every quit attempt except when contraindicated. Number seven states that counseling and, and medication are effective alone, but using both in combination are even more, in, more effective. 8 identifies telephone quit lines as effective tools for cessation. Number 9 urges clinicians to use motivational techniques to encourage quitting in patients who are unwilling. And 10 simply states that all clinically effective and cost effective treatment options should be made available to all patients who smoke. These guidelines are available to all tobacco users. Although this DMP project solely focuses on the treatment of cigarette smoking. Specific details regarding each key finding are available in the pamphlet that you will receive at the provider meeting. Although it would be optimal to initiate all 10 key recommendations in fullest form, this is not practical at MSU Care. The following slides include the specific interventions to be implemented at MSU Care based on these guidelines. The 5A's model is recommended for use in accordance with key finding number one, treating tobacco dependence as a chronic condition. First, it is important to ask about tobacco use and to document their status at every visit. Second, it is crucial that clinicians advise smokers to quit. This should be done in a clear, strong, patient-centered manner. This does not have to be a big ordeal or take long. The third A is assess. This is done by evaluating the patient's response after advising them to quit. The clinician determines whether or not the patient is willing to make a quit attempt at this time or if the recent quitter has additional challenges. The fourth A is assist. This is where interventions come into play. If a patient is ready to make a quit attempt, provide them with resources to assist them. For patients who have recently quit, help them with overcoming challenges in preventing relapse. For patients unwilling to quit, consider utilizing techniques aimed to enhance motivation to quit. These can be found on pages 24 through 26 of the Quick Reference Guide. Finally, follow-up should be arranged for all patients receiving the previous A's. The STAR acronym can be used to educate patients on improving quitting outcomes. Set, tell, anticipate and remove. It is recommended that patients who want to quit smoking should set a quit date, usually within two weeks. This should be something that is discussed with your patients during their office visit. Patients should also tell their family, friends, coworkers, and anyone they spend time with that they are quitting. The patient should request understanding and support. Challenges related to quitting should be anticipated. Inform patients on nicotine withdrawal symptoms and potential triggers for relapse. Removal of all tobacco products from the patient's environment should also be encouraged. Prior to quitting, patients should avoid smoking in places where they spend a lot of time, such as work, home, or vehicle. Patients should be aware that alcohol can trigger relapse and that they should abstain from drinking during quitting. Stress can also be a significant trigger. If a patient has high stress, Maybe, quit, maybe quitting smoking should be postponed and the patient's stress should be reduced prior to attempting to quit. Driving can also be a trigger, as many people smoke while they drive. Patients should be advised to quit with a friend or a partner in order to increase success. They can also use past quitting experiences to help to them to determine the best way to quit now. 
Bupropion SR, also known as Wellbutrin SR, is available to MSU care. This medication is an antidepressant, but works for smoking cessation because it reduces a patient's cravings for tobacco. Specific instructions are available on this slide and in the pamphlet you will receive at the provider meeting. Vereniclin, or Chantix, is available to MSU care patients through CMAP. This medication is labeled as a smoking cessation aid. It works by mimicking the effect of nicotine, reducing the urge to smoke, and reducing withdrawal symptoms. Specific instructions are available on this slide and in the pamphlet you will receive at the provider meeting. The decision to, pre to prescribe vereniclin or bupropion is completely up to you as the provider. Both of these medications can cause serious side effects, so prescribing them should be based on the individual patient's potential for risk and benefit. Nicotine replacement gum, sprays, and patches are not available through MSU care, but are recommended if patients are able to access them. If a patient is interested in receiving counseling related to their attempt to quit smoking, they can be referred to services through MSU care. Using the white cards located in the counseling office, patients can be referred and seen by one of the counselors on staff. According to the guidelines, practical counseling to teach patients problem-solving skills, quitting strategies, and coping skills, as well as supportive counseling to provide encouragement and to promote caring, can help to improve successful cessation attempts. Other resources to refer patients to include local support groups. Although there are none currently available for free, I will notify providers if I hear of any that open up. There are several smartphone apps available to assist patients in quitting smoking, as well as a free text message program through smokefree.gov. All patients who are considering quitting smoking should be referred to the Missouri Quit Line. The Quit Line is free and available 24-7. Patients can register online or over the phone, and there is also a mobile app that is available for use. The Quit Line is for people thinking about quitting, those in the process of quitting, and even those who have quit and want to avoid relapse. Through the Quit Line, patients will be able to speak with a trained quit coach about their personal smoking habits and smoking history. They can also set goals with the Quit Coach and develop a quit plan that is specific for them. Quit coaches can answer questions and provide support and encouragement to help keep patients on track. Through the quit lines, patients may also be able to receive nicotine replacement therapy as it is recommended but unavailable through MSU care. Remember, reducing smoking leads to a reduction in comorbid conditions, which impacts overall health care costs. Key points moving forward include using the 5 A's model to discuss smoking cessation with patients, prescribing medications as appropriate, referring patients to counseling if agreeable, and always advocating for patients to contact the free Missouri Quit Line to receive additional help in quitting smoking. According to the guidelines, different strategies work best when used in combination. Therefore, a patient taking Chantix, utilizing the quit line, and attending counseling is most likely to have success. Thank you so much for viewing this education and for participating in this research project. You truly are the key to helping patients succeed in quitting smoking. Please do not hesitate to contact me at any time via cell phone or email. I look forward to working with you and I look forward to seeing the impact we can have on patients.